Hi, my name is Eric Frischertz. I'm a cardiologist in Austin, Texas with CapitalCardio.com. I'm here to answer the question, what is hypertension? Hypertension is more commonly known as high blood pressure, and it's a very common ailment. 90% uh, of the time, we can never figure out what causes high blood pressure. It simply happens, and it does tend to increase in incidence, meaning the occurrence of the disease or the diagnosis of the disease increases as patients age. Uh, no one knows exactly why this is the case, and the numbers that we use when we measure blood pressure to determine whether or not you have hypertension are based on the systolic and diastolic pressures. The systolic pressure is the pressure when the heart contracts, and the maximum number uh, before hypertension is 140. Any number above that is considered high. The number on the bottom is the diastolic pressure, which is the pressure when the heart is relaxed, and the highest number acceptable for that is 90. Anything above that would be considered hypertension. The cause of high blood pressure has been a mystery for decades. You know, when I was back in medical school in 1972, our professors would tell us that about 90 to 95 percent of high blood pressure was benign essential. Well, first of all, there's nothing benign about it, and there's nothing essential about it. But a few areas were of concern. If you had, let's say, a coarctation of the aorta, which is a narrowing of the aorta, which causes high blood pressure, an overactive thyroid, or an overactive adrenal. But now, only within the last five to 10 years, we've actually determined a cause of high blood pressure, and it's oxidative stress. Now, what is that? Well, if you have relentless oxidative stress in your body, if you have a war going on in your body where you're generating more free radicals than your body can neutralize, then you're in a situation of oxidative stress. And when this happens, this causes constriction of blood vessels. In other words, if there's heavy metals in the environment or cigarette smoke, or if you're overweight, if there's a lot of inflammatory mediators in your bloodstream, all these factors are endothelial cell unfriendly. And when these situations accumulate, it can cause constriction of blood vessels. And when this happens, the blood vessels get tighter and tighter and the blood pressure goes up. Another factor is your autonomic nervous system. This is a nervous system you can't control. It's like the fight-flight response. And a lot of emotional stress factored in with oxidative stress from the foods we eat and the heavy metals in the air and the air we breathe and, and all the unnatural chemicals and petrochemicals in the environment. All these factors create a perfect storm. And if your nervous system is under stress or if there's a lot of heightened sympathetic tone, this situation in itself causes high blood pressure. Now, a lot of doctors don't realize that oxidative stress is a big cause of high blood pressure. That's why lifestyle considerations are really important. You need to take responsibility for your own health. You need to lose weight, exercise, take proper nutritional support, eat a healthy, non-inflammatory diet. All these factors will help support blood pressure. Unfortunately, high blood pressure typically doesn't cause symptoms. For a number of people, the first time they find out they have high blood pressure is when they have a stroke or a heart attack. The best way to pick up high blood pressure earlier is to get regular checkups with your physician, at least every one to two years to get a physical, which includes a blood pressure. Um, otherwise, the uh, initial presentation could be quite catastrophic. Blood pressure puts excess strain on the heart and increases your risk of having a stroke or a heart attack. Unfortunately, high blood pressure has no symptoms, and really the only way to know what your blood pressure is is to check it yourself at home or to have a doctor or nurse check it for you. It's important that everyone does get checked for high blood pressure at least once a year with your primary care physician, especially starting after age 50. So the biggest risk factor for high blood pressure is age. Uh, nearly everyone will have high blood pressure by the time they're 75. Uh, many people will start earlier. When we measure blood pressure, we measure two numbers, the systolic and the diastolic. The systolic is the top number, and that's the peak pressure that the heart produces and the body's exposed to. The diastolic is the lower number, and that's sort of the maintenance pressure that helps to drive the blood to the organs such as the brain and the kidney. To avoid developing high blood pressure, or to bring a slightly elevated blood pressure back to normal range, I recommend that you maintain a healthy weight, eat a diet low in sodium, get plenty of sleep, and avoid excess alcohol or cigarettes. If you're getting readings that are consistently greater than 140 over 90, you should let your primary care provider know. There are many ways that you can prevent high blood pressure from developing, or if you have high blood pressure, to, to maintain it and control it. So first and foremost, you need to eat a healthy diet. That's a diet rich in fruits and vegetables, low in sodium, and rich in whole grains. Secondly, you can exercise. Exercise actually reduces your blood pressure level. 
Most importantly, you need to maintain a healthy body weight. That means your weight over height needs to be below an index called the body mass index of 25 kilograms per meter squared. There are many new developments in the treatment of hypertension, and I'm fortunate enough in my role as the director of the Bart's Blood Pressure Clinic in London to be experimenting with most of these new therapies in randomized controlled clinical trials. This includes uh, treatment modalities such as renal nerve denervation, um, the use of barrel reflex activation, and the use of carotid uh, sinus uh, amplification therapies. However, I don't really want to talk about those because these are all experimental, and to me, the most important new developments in hypertension therapy are to avoid adding more and more tablets to the patient's medical regimen and to try and use a one pill approach to manage hypertension. This means that one pill will contain one active ingredient and if that doesn't work we move on to a second pill with two act to another pill with two active ingredients. If that doesn't work we change that to a pill with three active ingredients but we don't keep adding tablets to the patient's medical regimen because this is not pleasant for them to endure. I myself would hate to take tablets on a daily basis for an asymptomatic condition and I'm totally sympathetic with my patients who feel the same way. As far as I'm concerned, the management of hypertension should really involve minimizing tablets where possible, maximizing the use of lifestyle and trying to avoid making patients' life a misery with, enduring, uh, with enduring pharmacological approaches. Um, so we want to talk about, in this series, we want to talk about um, the kinds of exercise, the duration of exercise, and the intensity of the exercise. So what kinds of exercise have this effect on blood pressure? Mainly aerobic exercise. So aerobic exercise can be different things for different people, and you need to be careful when you're uh, starting a new exercise program. But what we can say is that you should be bre breathing briskly. So we will get into the intensity in the next segment, but you should be doing this brisk uh, walking, jogging, uh, where you can still carry a conversation, but you're a little bit winded. And you should be doing that for 30 uh, to 40 minutes, four to five times a week. Um, and how this has this effect is it allows the arterial system to be more responsive to the changing pressures that occur with exercise. And we'll be demonstrating that a little bit later, but it's basically um, the arterial system has to go a little bit further into a wider range of muscles and tissues, and so the heart has to work a lot harder to get that pressure to that area. And when you're at rest, as your body accommodates to the exercise that you're doing, it's allowed um, your blood pressure system can make those changes a little bit easier. Um, so now let's talk about how uh, to calculate or figure out how intensely you should be doing this aerobic exercise. Halasana and the variations. So lie back down. Bring both the knees to the chest. We do it the traditional way first and then we start to work with more core muscle development. Palms on the mat by the side of the hips. Take a breath in as you breathe out. You slowly take the legs beyond your head, start to support the spine, use the elbows, that's it, keep going, lift up, lift up, lift up with the spine, and then allow the toes to go beyond your head. Breathe. Good. Knees are locked in nicely, spine is well supported. Good. One leg at a time, take the legs way up, into the shoulder stand. Good. Push the heels, pull the toes in. Good. Now, bend both the knees towards the face. Plant the palms on the mat, one at a time. And slowly roll back out. And plant the feet on the mat. Good. 